match funding, the ever elusive, all necessary and altogether important match funding. Very quick refresher, you know all of this. Just a very quick reminder of what this means. Um, the monies you can apply for are here. And I can see Jolene very, very quickly fact-checking all of this. Um, uh, and of course, all of this comes with the uh, promise that you will be, um, you as a partnership, will be raising the proportionate uh, match funding that goes with it. Um, so for the small cooperation projects, of course, as Creative Europe came in, the match funding for the small projects was reduced to 40%. And I think the rationale behind this was to allow for more experimental, lighter projects, smaller organizations to be able to participate. Um, and for the large cooperation projects that remained unchanged um, at a nice 50-50 rate. And for literary translation, that is also 50%. If you are looking at platforms um, and networks, um, that is 80% that the um, program will put forward. And um, that's, that's a very important um, amount of money. Um, and of course, that also comes with um, certain strings attached with very rigorous uh, reporting there as well. All right, what is allowed as match funding? Anything you can put in, these can be own resources. So this can be whatever you have in your companies, your organization's bank account, reserves, all of that. Any kind of grant that you apply for, and of course you'll always want to make sure that these grants are also on their side eligible to be used. Um, uh, certain types of grants that you cannot use, and I will say this again because it is very important, um, if this has anything um, related to European funding, it's highly likely that you cannot use those types of grants um, as match funding for other types of European funding. That's called double funding, and that is a big no-no. Um, the project itself can, however, generate income. If you make money through this project, you can and should reinvest the profit from that into the partner's income. So the partnership income into this. If this is box office, if you are running um, yeah, so ticketed events, um, if you are running workshops, seminars uh, that you're charging for, all of this can and should be put back into um, the budget. Any kind of donation, any kind of sponsorship is fine. Of course, donation, we're talking about financial donation um, and not in-kind donation because that's where the big red exclamation comes in that I'll explain in a second. Um, so make sure you always capture this on paper. Um, seconded staff, if you have an existing member of staff or a proportion of an existing member of staff who will be spending part of his or her time on the project, you can and should show how this person has been working on the project and a proportion of their salary plus things like national insurance and, and, and pension if that's relevant um, as well. Um, now there are different types of staff costs that you can put in. You can put in staff costs that might be administrative, accounting um, staff, coordination staff, but you can also decide to use um, some staff costs if they have an artistic um, input into the project. This project funding isn't really there just to pay for people's salaries. They need to have a purpose within the project very clearly. The best projects are those that align very well with what you will be doing and what you want to do over the next couple of years, of course, with a partnership aspect to it, with a, with a clear determination that this is part of a European cooperation project um, in it. Now we get to the big red exclamation mark, but I think uh, Jolene made that very, very clear before already. In-kind contributions are not eligible. Here in the UK, I think we have a little bit of a floppy idea of what in-kind means, uh, because for some people, in-kind also means staff time. And there is a difference between in-kind and in-kind. Um, in-kind contributions 
for the European side of things is really everything that does not have an invoice, that cannot be tracked on an accounting system. This is how a project kind of looks broadly, and we've been refreshing the slide for a while. So it takes time. It takes time to find partners. It takes time to confirm partners. It takes time to double confirm the partners. It takes time to confirm the partners financial contribution. This is a very good time of the year, just before people go off on holiday, to make sure that you have their buy-in, that you have their support. The application deadline is um, early October. Most probably plan was to be in early October. Um, the results won't be published before probably April um, 2017, to be confirmed again. Um, and then a process called contractualization, I've always loved that word, starch, which is the time where you will um, say, yes, okay, the, the agency will say, yes, we will fund this project, well done, hooray, and then the questions come. Then you need to clarify a certain line on the budget, and then the question comes, okay, how much will the executive agency be transferring at the very beginning of the project? Might this be an installment? And this is something that also needs a bit of negotiation and might take a little bit of time. So projects generally shouldn't start much more than late spring, early summer. So typically, and if everything goes well, you will be getting, for the small cooperation projects, most of the grant up front. Um, then, in autumn-ish, the executive agency organizes what is called a kickoff meeting, and this has been a really, really useful event for a lot of organizations who are going in as lead partners. Um, this is only for the lead partners, and usually there are about two people from the lead uh, organization that come along. Usually this will be someone who will be a general manager, finance, um, kind of person and probably also someone uh, that'll be more there as a sort of artistic or, or the person who is coordinating the project. Um, and this is a really useful event. You get to speak to your officers at the executive agency. You get to meet um, the people at the European Commission who sit on the policy side of Creative Europe and you get to meet loads of other people who are in the same boat as you. Then the project runs for up to four years and I will very quickly point at this this is usually in the autumn, and the project can begin um, in May or June. So this will leave a good amount of time where you will be running a project and you will not, not have had the um, kickoff meeting. You will not have had the talking to that the um, agency colleagues will be giving you. Um, so this is a period that, that can be a little bit tricky, um, but for all of that, that's what the grant agreement is there for, the small print read it, it's really important. And again, we can give you completely informal and completely independent advice on what you might want to look at more specifically if you haven't had that guidance yet, um, but also speak to each other, other organizations and people who have been through it or who are going through it. The project can then run for up to four years. Um, our advice has always been make it a little bit longer than, than you think because it takes time to uh, wrap up a project, it takes time to go on holidays after the final festival and to recuperate from that, and then of course the time where you will be doing your financial cleanup. But as you have been very clearly running an excellent shop in all things finances, you will have had regular, quarterly, monthly, interim, interim financial reports. You will have everything already finished and perfectly displayed and the boxes ready packed for you to send off, obviously. Um, so you then have two months after the end of the project to submit the final report, which isn't just the financial report, but maybe we can talk about that a little bit later. And then um, it is only when that report has been accepted that you will be getting the final amount of the grant, typically 30%. So this is something that you need to cash flow between the partners as well, and another thing we might want to pick up a little bit later in our conversation.